Welcome to the Parkview Life Podcast. I'm Krista George. And I'm Chris Turner. And we here at Parkview love God. We love people. Our desire is to see generations disciple generations. So we're going to switch hats today, Chris, and uh, let you talk a little bit about the music ministry. Of course, Chris is our worship and creative pastor here at Parkview. And so uh, we're going to just ask you some questions about things. Certainly COVID has made a difference as far as how we do music ministry and yes it has that kind of stuff so uh, we'll get to hear a little bit about that but let's just start man how how did you get involved in worship ministry where did that begin for you well i grew up in a minister's home and so church was always a part of my life uh, from the time i was born but children's choirs and youth choirs and all that sort of stuff but first time i actually led worship uh, a buddy of mine in college uh, asked me if i would lead for his his church uh, on a Sunday, and uh, and I was kind of reluctant to do that. I was a freshman in college, and I agreed to do it uh, for a Sunday and thought that was a one-time thing, and um, little did I know they were interested in me coming back and doing it more often, and uh, and I was I had declared a music education major at the time, and God uh, was kind of stirring in my heart, and I felt like maybe education wasn't my direction, and had some more opportunities to, to do some leading, and, and uh, that was kind of the beginning of, uh, of, of where I am now. There's been a lot of ups and downs and challenges and struggles through the, the years, but, uh, but that's kind of how I, I got into it. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Well, everybody starts somewhere, and I think you know, usually it's a connection somewhere that kind of gets you involved in that, and the Lord opens your heart to it, and I'm, right. I'm glad that happened because that brought you here, I guess, eventually. Eventually. Know, through a, a lot of other turns. Sure. But yeah, so you know, music is such a huge part. Uh, of what we do on a given Sunday. I mean, certainly our lives are worship, but when we come together for the purpose of worship, um, music makes up a huge part of that. Um, so talk to me about what do you consider the anatomy of a good worship song? Because on a given Sunday, there's literally thousands of songs we could do. So how do you go about picking those? Right. Well, uh, contrary to popular belief, it's not uh, the top 10. It's not uh, those good old hymns I grew up singing. Uh, it's not any of those things. It's to me the most important thing is does it ascribe worship? Uh, and what I mean by that is does it glorify God? Number one, is that the primary focus of the song uh, to give praise and glory and honor to the Creator? Um, and and if it does that, that's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, is it singable? And what I mean by that is is what what's the range? Can the average person in the congregation sing the notes? Is it really low? Is it really high? Is it all of the above? Um, the rhythms, are they tricky? Is it, is it catchy? Is it easy to follow? Uh, so those are all important. And, and if it does both of those things, uh, then, then you've, you've, you've got the beginnings of something. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so I think those are both important. Is it, is it singable? Is it approachable? And does it worship the Lord? Yeah, definitely. So tell me, you know, we all have, have stories uh, we're going to get into some specifics in just a minute, but what's the weirdest thing that's happened to you in a worship service while you're leading? Well, I'll tell you, uh, going back to that first Sunday that I was talking about uh, as a freshman in college, uh, I went out to Ruby, Louisiana, if anybody knows where that is, and uh, I was leading worship and got to the offertory, and I brought my cassette tape you know, to sing the solo <laughs> uh, for the offertory that day and was rolling right along, and in about the middle of the song, it just quit. And so I had a choice. What was I going to do? And I just kept singing my song, and they were just absolutely amazed that I just kept singing. I'm like, well, what's the other option? Yeah. You know. So, uh, so there, but there's been several strange things. You know, power outages, just uh, blackouts, fire alarms during VBS. I mean, you know, all of these things have happened. So, yeah. uh, but, but that's probably one of my most memorable was first time I was at this church and their sound system just shut off in the middle of the song. So. Yeah. And I don't think people give worship leaders enough credit sometimes because there's so many things, there's so many moving parts to what you're doing up there that anything that goes wrong, you know, half the time people won't even know that something's happened. Um, but when, when things go off the rails, um, when you guys can bring it back together, it's really awesome. So and keep it together in the midst of all of those things. All right, man. So um, for those of who may not know, Talk about what we offer as far as music ministry at Parkview, I guess, between our worship services and other aspects of things. Right. So, I mean, on the most basic level, uh, we have worship on Sunday morning, 8.30 and 11 o'clock, and those two services offer a little bit different experience. The 8.30 service on Sunday morning is 
uh, as a more traditional service, and the, the 11 o'clock is, is more of what we would call a contemporary uh, service. And to be more specific, uh, the earlier service includes more hymns, maybe some older choruses, uh, and at least until COVID struck, we had a choir every Sunday, and yeah. we usually would have a, a choir special, either a call to worship, an offertory, some sort of feature for the choir and uh, and orchestra uh, to present uh, each Sunday. And we're getting back to that, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later uh, today. Uh, but going to the late service, the contemporary service, uses praise band, and uh we usually sing newer songs. Sometimes we do some throwbacks and some hymn arrangements and stuff like that. Uh, but but it's a little more band driven, uh, rhythm section, praise team, and and these are all areas that that people can get involved if they're interested in, in singing or playing an instrument: uh, drums, bass, guitar, keyboard, um, singing and praise team. Just let me know, and I'd love to talk to them and find out you know their skill level or how they could get plugged into that. Um, but but those are kind of what we what we do as far as worship services go here. Yeah, sure. So you alluded to it just a minute ago. What's what's the status of the choir? Because if there's one thing that COVID has definitely taken away up to this point, it's the choir. And so um, what's what are the plans? It has, right and it's now? been it's been a challenge. You know, we we zoomed for a little while um, just to try to keep touch with some of our folks and um, just to try to talk to some of the other guys in the community across the state. Hey, what are you doing? And just get every story, every possible scenario. Uh, I know that I was told early on by another local church uh, worship pastor that they weren't even going to try until the first of the year, and I thought they were crazy. But the, the farther we get into this, I think they were onto something that uh, just need to kind of st- take a step back. But but we're trying to to get back to normal. Uh, as you know, we had to scrap our Easter plans, so we didn't get to do an Easter musical uh, that we would typically do. Um, and we're working on some Christmas plans, but uh, what I do know is that we're going to try to start back so to some sense of a normal rehearsal time starting October 7th, and we're going to do that at 6 o'clock on Wednesday nights and uh, try to just begin a routine to get back together and uh, share some time with, with Scripture and songs and, and prayer and, and fellowship. So Yeah, yeah definitely. So why why would somebody be interested in joining, let's say, the adult choir, for instance? Well, choirs are really important, and uh, I mean, if we read through Scripture, we we see so many references to singing and choirs and the importance of that. And I'm reminded in Second Chronicles, chapter twenty, uh, how Jehoshaphat sent the choir ahead of the army uh, to lead the battle in singing, and uh, as they sang, "Give thanks to the Lord; His faithful love endures forever." They won the victory, and they never even had to, to pick up their swords or, or fight you know, any of the enemy, and they got victory through that. We're commanded to sing throughout Scripture. Uh, going to the New Testament, Colossians 3.16, among others, tells us to let the message of Christ dwell in us as we teach and admonish one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, which I think covers uh, every aspect of, of the style, if you will, types of songs that we sing in the church. Um, hymns, obviously, are hymns. Uh, some some of these songs are maybe more of a spontaneous, uh, just song to the Lord. You know, Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. I praise you. I love you, Lord. Um, and Psalms. I mean, Psalms. We we take and we put melodies with scriptures and and uh, Psalms in, in the Word of God, and we sing those as well. So so we try to do a good job of of following what's been lined out for us throughout Scripture. Uh, I think of a song that Chris Tomlin wrote several years ago as a great chorus, uh, just to remind us of why we sing, how could we not sing? It's called, How Can I Keep From Singing? And just says, how can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love? How can I keep from shouting your name? I know I'm loved by the King, and it makes my heart want to sing. I just think that's a great uh, expression uh, as we think about the the good things uh, that happen in our life, but also even when things aren't so good, um, we are still to sing. Uh, our singing is not conditional on how our life is going. Um, you know, we're told that, that we're supposed to praise in every situation. And I think a singing community, to get back to your question of why choir, why should people be involved in the choir, I think a singing community can help us do that. Uh, not everyone feels like they're a soloist uh, or, or wants to be alone or even in a really small group on stage, but if, if they're in a choir, they're more comfortable. 
and uh, we can put voices together, uh, creating harmonies and uh, just doing something special as a group. And, and I think that paints a picture for us of our unity in Christ. As we come together to create something musical, as we come together as the body of Christ, we can share these messages of hope with others in the congregation or the community uh, as we have opportunities even to go in our community and share uh, these messages of hope through song. I sing with a group called the Louisiana Baptist Singing Men, and uh, you probably heard me talk about this group several times. Uh, I shared an arrangement not too long ago on, our, on my Facebook page uh, song of the week, uh, How Great Thou Art, mm -hmm. that we had sung uh, for a funeral not too terribly long ago. Uh, and I bring this up because uh, there are months, and this past month was a great example, actually. Uh, I, I told my wife this as we were driving uh, to Pineville. Uh, why am I doing this again? Why am I driving two hours to go spend the night so I can be at a retreat at 8 o'clock in the morning tomorrow? Uh, there's so many other things I could be doing. But it puts me in the situation of the average church member that may be having a difficult week, and they're just trying to figure out, you know, choir is one more thing I've got to do this week. Do I really want to do this? Do I really want to stop my busyness of today? Maybe I just need to go to the grocery store, call it a day, uh, you know, go to bed early, watch my favorite show, whatever may be going on. But, but I'm reminded as I put myself in that situation and get on the other side of the music stand that when I'm able to sing with, with my brothers who are music ministers across the state or just, just other church members of Baptist churches that we sing together and the, the messages of hope that we come together, it gives me hope. And, and I would hope that as folks come and get involved in our choir and sing together and fellowship on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings, that, that those messages would speak to them first and then they would be able to share out of the abundance with the congregation and with those that just may need a word from the Lord that, that things are going to be okay, that, uh, that even though it's a difficult day, God's got this, and he's going to see us through it. And uh, just remind us of his promises. Uh, so it's one more way that we can do that. And, uh, and my prayer is that as we share Scripture and prayer concerns and biblical truths and, and fellowship together on Wednesday nights, that, uh, that we'll all go closer to God in that experience. I think I love that picture, especially when you talk about a choir of, of a multitude of voices combining together to proclaim a truth. And so, you know, the ascribing of worship to Jesus. And, um, you know, you, you kind of think about it. If, if you were by yourself saying something, you know, it might make an impact on somebody. Uh, but if you had 40 people there right. all saying the same thing, well, it, it kind of puts some force behind that. And so... I think it's the beauty of a choir is it, it's, you know, a statement in mass of this truth of who God is. And certainly as a congregation, we, re, we, we also direct that as well upward. Um, but it's something just it's really special about a choir when they sing. Um, I can just point back to a couple of times when I've seen big, big choirs gather together and, you know, and sing it just, uh, just times of, of really, you know, immense blessing, you know, hearing what they've said and, those have been some of my favorite experiences to be a part of the, the choir itself. Um, as I shared another song a couple of weeks ago, uh, when I had the opportunity to record with, with Tommy Walker and, and those folks in San Antonio about five years ago, just being a part of a 400 member choir, yeah. just as a choir member, just me being like up on the back row, just singing along. It's just, it's, it's a blessing to be able to, to be a part of that experience. Absolutely. That's one thing, you know, you hear a large crowd, you know, or something, it just kind of does something to you. It's just right. kind of the same yeah. force when you hear a bunch of people together. It's just some singing. of my favorite experiences. I, I got to sing with the uh, the Florida Baptist Worship Choir for a couple of years, um, and tremendous experience, over 300 in that group, and just, it's, it's an amazing thing. Yeah. So what would you say to somebody who says, well, you know, I really don't know, you know, I've, I've never been in a choir before, or never sung music like that? I mean, what would be your answer to them as to that being an excuse of why not to be in it, or I guess even an intimidating factor of, of why they wouldn't want to do it? Sure. I, I mean, I, I hear that all the time. I don't read music. I've never been in a choir. And you know what I think about as we talk about that is the Louisiana Baptist All-State Youth Choir that I was a part of for, for the last six years. We'd see kids that never sang in a choir didn't sing at their church, didn't sing at their school, didn't really sing at all, uh, but they would come and they had 
you know, maybe what they would think is a very average voice, but they would come and they'd be able to join with this group and they would get to sing songs. They would find that they really enjoyed singing. They definitely enjoyed the fellowship as they got to build relationships with with people their age and uh, find commonalities through that. But then they got that same experience of sharing with crowds and, and, you know, telling the message through singing. And so I don't think you have to have a strong background in it or, or a great understanding of, of what the notes on a page mean or anything like that. Um, that's part of the experience is learning uh, some of the basics of music. But a lot of it's oral. I mean, as you hear, uh, we have CDs or you know tracks that we can help with and uh, make that experience a little bit easier, especially as it comes to presentations for seasonal things. We'll have rehearsal tracks and uh, so if you can listen to something and catch on to it, you know, that that's really all you need to do. So Definitely. Man, that's such a great way to be involved in, uh, in worship, uh, doing that. So how, how does that carry over to what we do in 11 o'clock um, with the praise team and those kinds of things? Well, it'd be great if we had a, a little bit larger group of singers at 11 o'clock and were able to add some more harmonies and things like that. And, and I think we very well could, uh, but also I could see us maybe eventually developing a worship choir at 11 o'clock. Um, doesn't have to be a large group of people, but just something maybe we even did it once a month, mm-hmm. or, um, or it's something that, that that group joined with, with the group at 8.30, and you had a really large group for Christmas or Easter or, or some special you know seasonal presentation or, or whatever it may be, a hymn sing, some special night of worship. Uh, I think there's all endless possibilities, really. Yeah, yeah. So even somebody who wouldn't necessarily be in the choir week to week, there's certainly special occasions and seasons where they could get involved. Oh, know, absolutely. For, for and we've had time. some of that uh, since I've been here, some that, that really uh, they just want to sing for Christmas or, or maybe Easter or maybe Easter and Christmas. Uh, and, and every once in a while, some of those say, hey, you know, I think I want to do this every week. So Because the, the community community's everything. I mean, yeah. it really is as... Uh, people develop relationships with with folks and can share their 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 life struggles and and what's going on. So an opportunity to to not just sing but but see those people once a week and and catch up is important too. Mm-hmm. So how how do you how do you get involved? So let, let's say somebody wants to be in the choir or would like to participate in eleven o'clock. What, what's the what's the procedure for them getting with you and getting that started? Uh, I'm always available through an email or a call to the office, uh, but you know, or or you know grab me Sunday morning. Uh, but if you want to join the choir, come check us out October seventh at six o'clock in the choir room, and uh, we'd love to to meet you. We'd love to to just learn more about what you may or may not have to bring to the table, and it really doesn't matter. Uh, but it's just a a start. And uh, you know, choir may look a little different till we kind of figure this out. Uh, we don't know exactly. Who all will have come back? I know some are still a little uh, concerned about getting out quite yet, and that's understandable. And so, uh, so we're kind of it's it's a new start. Sure. So uh, don't be intimidated by that. Yeah. So one final question, I guess you know, let's just say somebody just is willing to say, "Hey, I don't sing. You know, um, I'm not a good singer." We all commanded to sing, and we all sing. Uh, some people sing better than others. Um, but if someone is saying, "Hey, I'm not gifted in that way, but I still I want to serve. I want to help." What, what can they do? What are some other ways besides just the singing aspect of things that people can be involved? Yeah, I mean, there, there are so many things that can be done. Uh, Baron and BJ are behind-the-scenes team uh, that, that we don't always see. Who do uh, an excellent job. Right, right. Uh, in fact, they're, they're helping us right now. Yeah, they're sitting right over uh, there. Yeah. We're thankful for those guys, but you know there aren't enough hands to go around with all the things that happen on Sunday morning behind the scenes. We've got lights, we've got cameras, we've got... Action. Uh, audio, yeah. We got, there's a lot of action <laughs> going on. We got audio. We got, you know, uh, there's things that we would like to try. Uh, we've got lyric projection. That's pretty important for the people that are trying to, to keep up with us as we sing the, the songs. Uh, so all those things take somebody to operate them. And uh, so even with both of them up there working, we still have to have volunteers to make that happen. And, and there are other things. If, if people just say, hey, you know what? I don't really sing, but I'm willing to help. Just come talk to us. We'll find a spot for you. Absolutely. We'll, we'll see what your gifts are, put you in the right place, and it'll be a blessing. Sure. Plenty of things to do and ways to be involved. And so um, don't ever hesitate. You know, I would say that you know, for sure, to, to wanting to get involved. 
Well, man, there's a, uh, literally a thousand more things we could talk about with uh, with worship ministry, and we'll we'll take time in the future to do that. But um, thanks for taking a few minutes to uh, kind of run through that with us, and um, encourage everybody to get involved in whatever ways they can uh, in order to serve the Lord. And so and that's what we yeah. desire to do: to lift Him high and bring Him glory. So, All right. well, I'm Krista George, and I'm Chris Turner, and this has been the Parkview Life Podcast.